Okay, vintage electronics fans and tube fans of tubes and things like that. No need to freak out. Yes, you're looking at something modern, but this is the monitor for my computer, Franken PC. And just recently, it's been acting up, and now it won't even turn on. It was doing going through this phase where it would just take ages to turn on. Eventually, it would turn on. Sometimes I would get a funky, psychedelic, garbled mess on the screen. Other times it would just not do anything. Sometimes it would just show a completely white screen. And now it's gotten to a point where it won't even turn on. Now, because I'm doing this video, it probably will work absolutely fine first time. But anyway, I want to make sure that it wasn't the graphic card in this computer that's messing up. So what I've done is, I've got my TV over here, also connected via the video out. So that's only composite video, but it's good enough to do the job. I mean, well, good enough for the test anyway, so we'll turn this on and let's see what happens. The monitor should come on, you would see normally, but you don't see anything on the monitor. There we go, we've got some... Well, I've got some weird stuff going on there. But if you look on the TV, while Windows is booting up, as you can see, it's not a problem with the graphic card because we do have Windows showing up there. But on the monitor, nothing, as you can probably see. Now, as soon as Windows has finished booting up, it's going to turn that output to that off. Although we might see the desktop, I've forgotten how I had this set up, so it might do it. Okay, there we go. Yeah, we can see my desktop on there. <coughs> Excuse me. It's not showing the graphic card is working, but the monitor is not. I'm going to try and cycle the power to see if I can get this to actually come on properly. Sometimes this fixes it. I cannot even get this to turn on now. So I think it's time to open this thing up and try to find out what's wrong with it. I've got a pretty good idea of what's going on in there. Right, okay, we're ready to take this thing apart. I'm having to do this on my bed because my bench is full of my latest projects, so... Firstly, I'm going to remove this makeshift stand that I made for... Goodness only knows when I did that. So I can stand the thing up. Anyway... Screws, screws, where are the screws? You know, I have absolutely no idea how this thing comes apart. I don't see a screw. I don't see any screws holding this together anywhere, unless there's something under this label that's holding that in. Okay, no screws under there, so that was a waste of time. Well, this is a real enigma. I need to fix this monitor, but I have absolutely no idea how to even get in there. There's no screws. How am I supposed to open this up? Actually, it looks like this bit's just coming off, so maybe I could just unsnap this, hopefully without breaking anything, because we don't want to break that LCD screen. All right. After months and months of struggling, I finally got this thing apart. Okay, maybe it wasn't months, but this thing put up quite a battle. I found out that this whole bezel on the front here is not what comes off, it's the back that comes off. And that just clips onto the front, like, um, well, pretty much like that. I thought I'd turn the autofocus off, but it seems to have turned itself on again. 
And I also thought I'd have a look at one of the little speakers just to see what they're like. I thought this thing would use little, um, like, same kind of speakers that would come out of, like, headphones or a Game Boy or something like that. But actually, that kind of surprised me. That's not to say they're any good. But it just surprised me what kind of speakers they used. I'm just going to put those back in. Because I got no real use for them. I mean, I never use the speakers in this monitor anyway, because they sound like utter crap, but still. It's this part we're interested in. This is the monitor, this is the other side of it. I hope I did not break the screen. Because, like I said, that put up quite a battle. It was really reluctant to come apart. Anyway, I think our problem lies within what's behind this metal shield. I'm actually quite surprised to see they went through all the length of putting down electrically conductive tape to, to shield some of the parts in here. That's a... Uh, yeah. So, let's just see if we can get this out of the way. And undo the screws. Oh, screw it. I'll just replace that with tin foil. Same kind of thing anyway. There we go. Because there's a screw under here. So, take that out. I'll take all the screws out. That are holding it in. And of course, we always got one that's going to cause problems. I'm just going to need to go and get a small screwdriver to get this out. Alright, let's try this one. It's a really thin one, that might do it. There we go. Oh, it would help if I was shooting it in the camera. This is a teenager screwdriver because it's thin, and teenagers are thin. For some reason. Unlike me. It's the fattest thing on earth. Looks like we've got a high voltage power supply. So I think this thing might be fluorescently backlit. I was expecting LEDs. Oh yes, 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 yes. I can see a problem right away. I don't know if you can, but... Maybe if I just held, hold this another angle. Try to show you what more... Try to show you up close. Can you see a problem here? Well, I can see a problem. I can see two problems, actually. These two parts here are really bulging out. So, just as I suspected, we're going to need to replace a couple of capacitors. And that should fix the problem. So, what do we got here? What do we need? What do we got here? Yeah, that seems like some kind of generic brand there, Capscom. So this one is a 1000 microfarad. Well, I've got plenty of those. And this one is, and I can find the actual value of it. And that one is, appears to be, a 680. So. We need a 1000 microfarad and a 680 microfarad. Okay, well, here's the power supply board taken out. So while waiting for the soldering iron to warm up, let's just take a bit of a closer look at this. Looks like we've got some kind of flyback topology here, because there's just one transistor, which powers the main transformer. We've got some stuff on the back, but we don't really need to concern ourselves with that, because... We know where the problem is. Now, I have a 1000 microfarad capacitor that I could replace this one with. I know it's a little bit bigger, but it's same voltage and same value. And the trouble is, I don't have a 680 microfarad to replace this one with. So, what I'm going to do is use an 820 instead. And that should be okay, because that capacitor is not being used in any kind of 
frequency control or filtering apart from ripple filtering it's not being used in any kind of H bridge or anything like that so we'll be fine with replacing that now I just need to find my solder and we'll be good alright there we go got the capacitors out and this is the worst one of the, t of the lot um, let me just try to focus in on that so you can see it okay so now you can see it you can really see that that's bulging out like that to some people that might not look that bad but in the world of electronics that's something you don't want you can also see a little bit of electrolyte leaking out the side there I mean leaking out the top there so yep that is what a bad capacitor looks like so now it's time to put in the replacements gonna make sure that I put them in the right place because there were some unpopulated places on this board before I took capacitors out we need to put, I'm going to put the 820 microfarad one there to replace the 681 and that's where the other 1000 is going to go so I'm going to make sure I've got this the right way around fortunately the mark which should be positive luckily the mark which is positive and which is negative so the stripe goes to the dark bit I'm just going to have to redo that hole because I cannot get the, the holes kind of sealed itself up so I just need to get that open like that there we go solder or solder or solder depending on your preference of saying that word that one in there and that one in there there we go I don't really like this lead free solder it always makes the things look like they've been badly soldered but it's because they, they go so dull but let's lock the door I just need to click the legs off so there's one capacitor replaced now we just need to replace the other one which went in which went right in there so let's get that lined up properly again the holes have closed up so I just need to get those legs in the holes I know I'm not showing this in the camera and let's put that in there making sure I've got the polarity the right way around because we don't want anything to go bang just try to get that in there just try I'm just poking the legs through so get that in there alright we got that in Solder that in nice and good. That. And that. And there we go. That should be all we need to do. There it is, repaired. We might need to replace this capacitor because you can't always tell if a capacitor is bad just because it's bulging sometimes they can go bad without doing that but um, for now I'm just gonna see how well it works with these two new capacitors in its place so I'm gonna put this back together see if it works and hopefully everything should be just fine okay here's the monitor put back together and connected back up to the computer and it didn't blow up when I plugged it in and I got a no signal displaying on the screen so that means the screen is okay so anyway I'm going to turn the computer on so anyway let's give this a proper test so anyway I'm gonna turn the computer on now which is gonna turn on the monitor so anyway let's turn this thing on and see if it works And look at that 
So there you go, that's how easy it is to repair one of these things. Okay, sometimes it's not just capacitors that go wrong, but that's usually the, th that's usually the case with these things. So that's a successful repair, and until next time, goodbye. Okay, well that's it for this episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Remember, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And why not hop on over to my channel, check out some more of my videos, and even donate! You don't have to, but your donations, no matter how small, really help the show. So anyway, that's it for this video, and until next time, goodbye.